Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. If you haven't already, guys, please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified whenever we do a video. Probably less than 20% of you viewers have subscribed, so um, if you could do that, guys, it'd be much appreciated. Well, guys, as you can see, Paul is operating the new Aqua Blast. So we managed to figure out yesterday, after speaking to customer services, how much medium we had to put in it and what have you. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with it. What do you reckon, Paul? It's pretty good, mate. It's pretty good. What are we doing in there? We're doing the BMW sump by the looks of it. Yeah, got BMW sump, so... Uh... You see in there? We'll sort of give you a little run through of how to use it. You've got the control panel down there, which turns the LED lights on and the Aqua Blast logo. So this little control here we figured out works the, uh, the pressure in the, well, this little hose here in it that washes the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, the window wiper is activated by the foot pedal when you get that going. Uh, what else do we need to know? Let's give it a go, Paul, isn't it? Yeah, well, we, this one's pretty much done, mate, but we're, uh... So, so the one thing it takes getting used to straight away compared to the, the bead blaster is the pressure, the water pressure. It's sort of, it's a bit of a handful holding the hose, isn't it? As they say. You gotta brace yourself, mate. Brace yourself, sir. Oh, hello. Yeah. So we were told um, by customer services to sort of fill the level up Fill the level up with water up to, I think it's sort of just below this level here, um, and then basically put a whole bag of medium in there, Hello. which we've done. Let's take that out, shall we? Let's, let's take it out and see. It's not completely done. Bear in mind, this was the this is the sump off the M54 engine, which is fairly grotty. So yeah, still got a fair bit of medium in there. Looks pretty good though, Paul, doesn't it? That's pretty good, mate. You reckon we could do with a bit more pressure in there or no? Uh, yeah, you could try a bit more. It's got pretty much all the dirt off, isn't it? It's pretty much back to... Yeah, all looks pretty good. Finishes a bit more, uh... It's a bit more of a... I'd say it's a, it's a bit more of a slow process than the straight bead blaster. Yeah. Um, I think the finish that is But you do, you do get a nicer finish. You get more of a glossy finish, don't you, as opposed to a dull finish. Yeah, but once, once we wash that... We've got a little hose in there, which we um, which we can swill it off afterwards. Get my hands in. Give us a little demo of the hose there, Paul, with the bendy end. Oh, 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 oh hello! Oh, oh, oh. oh, there we go. Oh, oh. Dear me! What a pressure that was! And you can sort of set the pulse rate on it, and I suppose that just. I mean, I mean that that's quite a lot of pressure, isn't it? It is really. I mean, it's a long thing spitting out liquid. Hilarious ball. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So yeah, so far guys, we're more than happy with that. It seems to be doing the job. What it's like to clean it out, I mean, it's not really going to be, what we can see, it's not really going to be any sort of easier to clean out, the, you know, always and what have you, nice. than the bead blaster really, is it? It's just, you get a better finish. You've got to be careful what you put in there. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, so far so good. I mean, right guys, bit of a new one for us. If you have a look on here, this is the Independent Porsche Enthusiast Club. Um, and these guys have, I think the organizer for the Southwest is Ian Marsh. Um, Ian got in touch with me a few weeks back and asked if he could come down with a few members um, and have a little tour of our unit. Yeah, just come down, meet us and bring along a few of their cars and um, some tea and they bought their own milk and bought some cake and what have you. So it's really good to meet them. But Ian's watched the channel. So um, I think that's half the reason for him getting in touch with us. But yeah, it's really, really good. Although I don't own a Porsche myself, you know, I really like Porsches. I think John is out there at the moment. I've a had a chat with a few of the guys and they're, um... see Johnny's through there giving the guided tour. If we go down here and have a little look at the few of the cars that they've turned up in. So first of all, there's a few guys turned up in non-Porsches. There's a nice Golf R there. See, Stuart's got his Porsche 911 here for sale. This is a Targa 996. You can see there's a pretty cheap price, that. And um, it's a really lovely car. If any of you guys there are 
in the market for buying a Porsche. I'd highly recommend you get in touch with us and I can put you onto Stuart. But yeah, nice car that. But yeah, you can see 911 over there. It's an, another couple of, I think that's a, a Cayman. Nice 911 here. I want a nice, nice 924S. Um, so yeah, really, really kind of Ian to organise. I think he was half thinking about bringing over half a dozen members, but it's like 12 or 13 of them have turned up. So yeah, so really, really happy that they've they've took the time out to, to take a little trip out. It's, as I say, it's, Ian runs the, the West Country side of it. So I suppose from, you know, the whole of the West Country really, but yeah, made up about that. We're not really Porsche specialists, but we have done Porsche engines. We've done quite a lot of machining on the old air-cooled stuff in the past. So um, yeah, you never know, a job may come out of it. But if not, he said that we're always welcome to go over to their little meets and what have you that they have once a month. Um, so I may well do that, go down to Columpton and meet, them up, meet up with them again. But yeah, if any of you guys have, are members with, of clubs or run clubs, you're more than welcome to come down, guys. Just all I'd ask is bring your own tea and cake. In the last video, I said about the, um, the hold up with the pre cross flow. We have yet another hold up, a bit of a problem. Um, we set about starting the V8 BMW yesterday because all the bits have arrived from BMW. You see in these nice boxes here. Um, it always makes us laugh. They send one individual shell in all this packaging. Um, what a waste. But anyway, first thing we did obviously un. So unpacked all the all the bearings. So just to jog your memory, we've had to grind this crank on the mains 0.5 um, standard big ends because we did the it's churned up the uh, the rear main really that's that does the thrust um, because of that blockage. So we've had to grind that 0.5. But fortunately, like I said, they do 0.25s and 0.5 mains, although still color coded from BMW. So we ordered all the bearings, went through that with parts. Um, it took a good sort of two weeks to come from Germany. It all arrived yesterday. We put the bearings in. Um, Paul, <laughs> Paul went to, we put the crank in, which went in nice and easy, put the mains caps on just to, uh, just to talk down. And you can see we've got the plastic gauge on there to uh, just check the clearances, obviously, because we've gone for the middle color. And um, it didn't even, when we took the cap off, it hadn't even touched the plastic gauge we thought that's a bit odd so it turns out that the bearings they've sent are the standard ones in the green color so i've been onto them today um, it's their muck up obviously the only other thing they did is we've got i think you've got four mains which are all the same obviously you've got the tops and then you've got the bottoms which are plain and then you've got different top and bottom thrusts but they sent us so they sent a standard size as opposed to 0.5s on all of them. But on the thrust, they sent us two upper bearings as opposed to an upper and a lower. See those two there, they're exactly the same. So apart from that, the guys, they've got it all right. Um, so that's gonna be another week or two now that we can't get on with this job. Paul has put a Comrod on the journal and plastic gauge that, and we're looking at sort of about 2,000 running clearance, which is absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, yet another setback, guys. Right guys, we've got a bit of an odd one here. Um, so this is a TR4 block and it's got the, the wet liners that sit in the top there. Now the liners, they give the protrusion between about 2,000 and 5,000. 5,000, we think, is slightly too big really. Um, the trouble is if you go too much, you end up with a weep around the outer edge of water. So you have to sort of seal it. Um, the customer is building this himself, John. John Blake, he, um, he races these. John's built loads of these engines, so he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, he uses an annealed copper gasket on it. Um, now, the odd thing is, we did do the liner protrusions on this some time ago before John's, obviously he's only just got round to building it. Now, what he's done is he's built it. Um, we've give it a sort of couple of thou, two or three thou protrusion. Um, he's run the engine up and before it ran absolutely lovely to start with and then before too long it just started i think it started misfiring so he's took a plug out there's water in the cylinder and what's happened is he's obviously took the head off and it looks like the liners have sort of dropped now they're a nice snug fit in the base there you can see you use some sealant on the mating faces but he's done his measurements and he's pretty right to be honest with you on the back edge it looks like two to two and a half thou. And then on this forward edge, you've got 
zero protrusion of the liners up to probably a slightly negative so i'm not sure what's happened there um, i've cleaned the block off set it on our table and just used our height gauge with feeler gauges to see where we are and with it flat on the bed there um, it is basically it is sort of slightly i'd say slightly high on this side so what i've done is i've give it a tooth out cut um, and it's cleaned along this back edge so we've now got probably tooth out protrusion nothing up here where it says two and a half and it's just started to clean over where it says sort of two so that does work out right really so i'm not sure what happened there but um it looks right now and it's it looks really that the sometimes you've got the bases that are not parallel with the bottom so if you set it up on the base um the line of protrusions are going to end up sort of uneven but i'm going to give that another two probably a thou now so we're going to have about three thou protrusion on the whole lot put the liners in and see what we've see what we've got but yeah not quite sure what what's what happened there but i've set the height gauge up so it's just touching that block face and then if i go over to this side it's doing the same thing so we know now that that is they are the same height so i've just put another one thou cut on and you can see it is where he got two and a half thou protrusion it's just literally touching on the back there so i suspect now um, if my calculations are right we're going to end up with about three thou protrusion throughout the board both sides so i can't really think what's happened there apart from maybe being set up originally with something under here and it's sort of a bit tipped like that Fingers crossed, we'll get those liners in and hopefully it's all right. Fortunately, John's a very nice guy and he's, um, he's fairly laid back. But, um, yeah, I suppose we'll have to bite the bullet and reimburse him for this, really, if it's our fault. But just goes to show you only got to have one or two thou um, or not clean properly and it can cause a complete strip down of the engine. So, a bit of a nightmare, really. Right, I'm just on the small lathe here and as you can see I've got a Pinto piston in there and we're just facing off the top. Uh, so Paul did a dummy build the other day and we are getting 70 thou protrusion um, which alarmed Paul initially but I did sort of remind him that these are a semi-finished piston with a, a 12mm thick crown and um, yeah, so 70 thou we've got to take off, which is for all you metric people out there, is 1.75 or one three quarter millimeters. So that's what we're doing here. Obviously three of the pistons I've got not on the rods, which I can do in the small lathe. A lot easier to do in the small lathe when you haven't got a rod hanging off the end. But unfortunately, um, I've had to do one piston in the big lathe with the com rod attached to it. And the reason for that is, is to do the dummy build with one piston in the block. Um, these are not a circlet type piston, so they're a, a sort of shrink fit on the rod. And once you get them on, you can't really get them off without damaging the piston. So once it's on, it's on. And with the big lathe, we can get the con rod up the, up the hole in the centre. See there, it's big enough. So yeah, we can do that on there, but it's not a problem. It's just a little bit more tricky on the big lathe. Um, so yeah, just doing this guys and what this is going to leave us with is all the pistons flush with the top of the block Then we can work out once we get our centronic back round there um, Our valve seat cutter we can cut the seats um, and then Work out what compression ratio we're going to run and what the what the bowl Volume is on the of the gasket and the cylinder head and work out how much we've got to take off the head um, also, once I've finished these in a minute, Paul can crack on with the bottom end on the Pinto and, uh, and we can get that bottom end pretty much sorted really, just wait for the head to be done. So guys, while I'm plugging away at these piston crowns here, uh, probably a good op opportunity to tell you about the progress on the E30. Um, so we had Mikey Dove in um, yesterday and Mikey sort of come up with a plan on what we're going to do with the with the body um, so 
he's going to be taking this car away in the next two or three weeks. Um, we are going to be fitting the rear panel, like I said, for the pre-facelift for the M3, so we can put the M3 lights in there. Um, we're going to be fitting new sills, although they don't really need it, they're not rotten. The other side, the passenger side, is a little bit battered, but we're going to put new sills on there, start from fresh, and he's going to be putting the, um, you know, like the little holes in the side for the, for the stands, a um, little bit racy, bit trick. He's going to obviously be doing some work underneath. We're going to be buying a, a kit to do the bracing for the chassis. Um, so that's all the little bits, like the strut tops to the inner, inner wings and stuff like that, just to brace the chassis, stiffen it up a bit more. Um, and I'm going to leave Mikey to do the inside. So he's going to be relocating the battery, the fire extinguisher, things like that, routing the, the, the fuel pump pipes and all the rest of it. Um, so I'm going to leave all that side to him. He's going to be stripping the engine bay, all of wiring. We're going to be getting rid of all the wiring um, for the chassis and all the fuse box, relays, all that. And we're going to be using a 32-way uh, PDM. If none of you know what that is, I've only just taught myself what that is. It's a power distribution module and that does away with all the fuses, relays, um, and it's all sort of electronically controlled. Um, you can sort of input all the, the amperages you want for each input and all that. So you can run all your lights, um, engine fan, all your internal things, indicators, everything. A bit like the kit car, run everything through that. So that's the way we're going to go. We're going to probably go um, for an AIM 6-inch dash, which goes along with the PDM. And um, at the moment, we're probably going to stick with the standard ECU because we know the engine runs fine on that. And um, that's sort of as far as we've got at the moment, guys. Obviously, we're still waiting for the wheels. Um, high spec are doing the brakes at the minute. We're going to go for, because we're running a 17 inch motorsport compromotive, we're probably going to go for a 355 on the front with a six pot caliper and go for a, um, a slightly bigger than original vented disc at the back with a four pot rear caliper. And the disc will have the integrated drum and the center for the for the standard conventional handbrake because obviously this is going to be a road car as well um, also what mikey's going to be doing is putting seat rails in i want an adjustable seat to go with that so it sits us a little bit higher and also we can adjust it because it's not just me that's going to be driving it it's going to be the boys as well and we're hopefully going to be putting a an adjustable steering column because i don't know whether any of you have ever driven an E30 BMW, but the steering wheel's a bit up in the air. Not ideal for road use, really, when you've got bucket seats. So, yeah, just we're going to make it a little bit more user-friendly for the road, but very much track orientated. So, ordered a few bits last night. Um, all the sort of external little farty bits that really are not going on till the end, but you still got to get them, get them bought. Things like the front indicators that go in the front M3 bumper. Um, they're, they're rocking horse poo. So I managed to get a set last night. Astronomic money, but got to have them. Got the new smoked, not smoked headlights, but the, these darkened headlights with the back, back, um, black background, black grill, things like that. Um, we've got the rear M3 lights. Um, I've ordered new Perspex windows in 4mm thick reinforced Perspex with the, the openings on the front windows, same as them ones, but just new really. Um, so yeah, that's the lowdown with the E30 guys. Probably not a lot's going to change with this car now for the next couple of weeks until Mikey has it. He's going to take it away, but we're going to be heading over there and doing some footage on that really. But yeah, quite excited. Well, thank you very much for watching today's video guys. Until Monday, have a great weekend and we'll see you then. Cheers.